man. Just yeah, do it. Come on. Yeah. Just do it. Come on. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. All right. Ah. Well, it was a few years ago, and I had just gotten out of the Navy after my injury. They, you know, they retired me and they let me go and all the rest of that good stuff. Gave me my check, and you know that was it. I, I pretty much figured my career was over at that point because, you know, due to the nature of the injury, I couldn't walk the way that I used to. I couldn't stand, couldn't sit, uh, couldn't maneuver, couldn't keep up with the day's work. You know, just like I'd used to. So I figured, okay, well, my you know career working on cars and doing all this fab work and you know, going crazy was pretty much over. That's I, I thought that was pretty much the end of it. But I got an opportunity to take a seat in a, in a uh, class called uh, uh, Workshop for Warriors. And it's basically a, a program for veterans that uh, they teach them things like welding, uh, fabrication, machining, drafting, CAD, CAM, all the rest of that good stuff. And you can, you, you can get into that, you know, with the uh, being a veteran and all that. So I decided to take the seat. Let's go for it. Let's learn because at the time, that's all I didn't have on my resume was stuff like drafting and uh, CAD work and CAM and, and writing G code and understanding it and running machines and all the rest of that good stuff. So I went through it. Everything was awesome. I was so proud. And of course, afterwards, it's like I don't have to deliver, you know, cut work on a cocktail napkin with some crudely uh, scribbled numbers. I can deliver the file. And I was, I remember I was just so happy about that as soon as it was done. But you know, machining was just, it, it, it literally was like the next best thing. So fast forward a little bit, I moved back to Vegas, meet some great people, good friends of mine. And, uh, you know, we decided we'll get a little venture going. And we decided on machining because I, you know, I got plenty of time to kill. Uh, my buddy's got some capital he's got to blow. But combined here, we didn't have enough to get a big machine or anything that was like, uh, you know, off the shelf, hundreds of thousands. Of course, we, you know, we could have financed it or whatever, but we decided, okay, neither one of us know how to run a machining business. So let's start out slow. The idea, we'll grab something from, you know, straight off the boat in China. Uh, and we ordered a, a machine, CNC machine, straight out of the warehouse. It was about 7000 bucks. took about four months, and it finally showed up. And the idea here is we're going to take this piece of junk, and we're just going to retrofit it with all of the new good parts and stuff that's going to you know, make it actually function and form. So we basically just need a foundation. We'll throw some other stuff on there you know, later on. Now, looking back on it, I mean, that was a stupid idea. We should have... <laughs> You know, just follow the, the, that saying, you know, you, you buy something cheap or whatever the case is, you know, don't expect some great results, you know. And what, what the actual saying is, uh, you know, you buy something correct or buy a good product, you only cry once. Well, every time the CNC fires up, I'm crying inside. It's just, it's, you know, it's awful. It's a, it's a piece of junk. The biggest problem with it is the, the repeatability. For anything in a production shop, I can cut something on a jig flip it over and I can't even come close to 10 thousandths of an inch in accuracy. I mean, it's just that bad. And we've sunk so much money into this thing and I have sunk so many hours into it. It's just like, pfft, I pretty much stopped using it. It's, it, it became a table, uh, you know, for putting all this other stuff and all the parts and, you know, everything else like that in. I mean, it's a good machine for somebody on the home hobby, but for production, it's, it's a paperweight. $10,000 into this thing, it's a paperweight. So either way, the other day we're doing uh, the episode about uh, uh, tungsten stick out and we wanted to see you know does it really matter how much you stick out your tungsten on a you know certain size cups that was a basic idea of this one but I had to eliminate human variables in this one so we can't just you know I can't just weld something and I can't just bring somebody else in here to weld something because even though two people welded identical joints you know and maybe produced you know the same length and you know same everything they're gonna get different results because each welder has their own signature, their own style, their own uniqueness to what they do. So I had to find a way to completely eliminate that variable. Now I've got no machining skills or knowledge or anything about that when it comes to CNC or robotic welding, but I figured let's just follow the basics of engineering on this one or you know the standard structure in which we normally follow and that is you know, take one piece one step at a time. Now, there's an old saying called keep it simple stupid or keep it stupid simple. Whichever one you want to use, I've heard them both. But the stupid is what I'm always looking for in everything that I do because the stupid or the stupider, it's not even really a word, but the stupider it is, the easier it is for me to uh, structure it, to identify, to break everything down. So systematically we go through it and say A, B, C, D, E, and by the time it's done we have product. And that's exactly the way it works. Reverse engineering, we take the whole product and we break it down saying that's that, that's that, 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 that. 
and you know you run all the way down until you actually have your result or your assembly or your product. So the idea with this one, I've never done anything with a CNC machine. I just decided, okay, right, let's rewire this thing real quick. Let me hook in a TIG welder into it. We'll wire it up so that way we completely eliminate the variable. And all we're doing, and all these hours I spent on here, we're just making a weld, one single weld, three inches long. That's it. This is not hard to program. And of course, in my brain, I'm just like, well, you know, simple path. We'll just make it go from here to there, make the thing fire the same way every single time. And that's it. We'll see our results on it. Well, <laughs> once I started doing that, I was like, well, this is really cool. You know, maybe I can do more with this. So I started stacking up other welds. I said, well, like, well, let me, let me do some butt welds on here and, you know, stick those together. We'll click the pulser on and have some fun with it. I'm getting a little sidetracked on the you know, on the schedule, because we've got a really strict schedule to keep for video production and all the rest of that good stuff. Plus, I have the business to run. And that, you know, I'm just kind of burning away the hours here and uh, wasting time. And then it, I just literally got consumed by it, you know, because I, I made this, this absolutely gorgeous lap well, just perfect. Like, oh, my God, I just literally made this with a, a cheapo Chinese CNC machine and an expensive welder that I just spent a couple hours hooking all this up here. So I was like, well... Maybe I can push this just a little bit further. Let's like, let's have some fun here. And uh, I decided, all right, I'm going to go after a 3D part because I was literally just consumed. It was like it's one of those things that when you're when you're in this industry and you know you get that creative side and it's just it kind of completely overwhelms you. This took me over completely. So we have the pieces and parts. Still a few of them from uh, the X, Y, and H pipe episode where we you know built all those and showed everybody how to do it. And the thing is, one of them was not welded. And I'm like, well, let me spend just a few minutes here, draft up this piece uh, of, a, of, a, of an elbow that we cut in half with the same dimensions that we cut it on. I, I took the outside of the tool path on the, uh, on the cutaway section on there, or I took the outside edge of it, and I made the tool path based on that. Now, getting it all set up and everything like that, you know, it, it took some time. It took a lot of time. And, of course, like I said, I was burning a lot of hours here, and I was so consumed on it. But I started stressing, like, super hardcore, like, oh, my God, is this actually going to work? What happens if it doesn't? You know, I mean, everything's just, just, I'm getting blown away by this. I'm like, oh, God, I don't know if I can do this, you know, because time's ticking here. I've already blown away so many hours on here, but I have to get this done. i got to try this thing. So either way, I do so many passes over and over and over again, just dry runs, making sure everything lines up and everything like that. And I was just, you know freaking out here i know that the machine is not going to do anything that i don't tell it to do but like if something goes wrong here you know we either kill the cnc machine that's not going to work because i mean we're already at a loss with it and if we destroy it it's total loss so you know it's not going to do me any good you know i'd rather just sell it to whoever would want to buy it and work with it but you know if we destroy the cnc machine that's game over I got an expensive welder that's wired into that CNC machine. So if the welder goes, that's a seat that is not available in a welding class or one of our welding classes here. So I can't do that because that's technically taking away from somebody's potential future. So if we're down one machine, we're down one student. You know, that's something that I got to worry about that. Now, I don't know anything about if, it's, if the electronics are going to interfere. I don't know if any, you know, anything's going to go terribly south on it. You know, whatever the case is. Super stressed. Finally had enough talking to where... My buddies, you know, gave me all I, all I could give, and I finally just, boom, hit that button. God. That is beautiful. Except I totally missed. And I was like so relieved finally that okay, I stressed about nothing. It went there flawlessly. Everything was good, but I totally missed. So what do I got to do now? I got to get this right. I got I'm not stopping until this is done. Of course, still starting to stress a little bit. Clock's ticking. I'm running out of time. I got to do this, but you know, still going and going and going and we're starting to run it over and over again. And that's when things start getting bad. 
I might have been rushing. I might have just been trying to hurry up and get this weld, or maybe I was just so consumed, so, so excited that I just started overlooking things. Because the machine's crashing, the torch angle's changing, you know, parts are getting stuck to it, it's dragging across there. We don't have any safeties on the machine itself because it can't program all the welding. You know, there's no feedback from the welder. There's no, there's just on and off. There's no feedback from the machine, you know, in, in, in trip sensors or stuff like that. It says, oh, the tungsten's stuck and now it's dragging it across the table. There's nothing to stop that. So I've always got to be on the lookout, reset the part. This is all taking so much time. Now I'm starting to stress again. I'm starting to get worried. And then finally, like I'm at maximum, I've, you know, taken way too long to do this and, you know, mad that I've allowed myself to get so taken away by it that I realized I missed the stupid. And that stupid was very, it was just very simple. I'm going way too fast. The problem is, is I kept on setting it up and running all these dry runs that I jacked the speed up on it. So the reason why this is not being able to, you know, buzz and get these things going together and, you know, have that consistency and hit it and actually melt it, it's just literally just moving way too fast. So I slow the machine down, give it another shot. There it went. Like as soon as it finished, I was just screaming, excited, you know, all of this. But you look at you look at the you know the weld on it. You know, I mean, yeah, it's gorgeous. Yes, I made a machine do that and all the rest of stuff. And it, you know, it's it's a little bit undercut. You know, there was there was no purge on the tube because you know it's just it's a scrap piece. You know, you're not gonna not gonna pump a ton of argon into a, an experiment or anything like that. So there was no purge. Uh, penetration was minimal. It didn't even get through like you would by hand or anything like that. But what it really boils down to here is at the end of the day, I literally took a few hours with zero robotic TIG welding or robotic CNC welding or any of that, you know, in that category. I'm not really even sure exactly what it's called, but a guy with no experience just made a robotic weld or a CNC weld in a machine with only a few hours out of just some stuff that I have laying around the shop, quite literally. And I, I truly hope that that's inspiring for other people to, to, to do that, you know, even in the years that I've been in this industry and all of the things that I've done, here's a first for me. And it literally was just because it was stupid and we were able to follow the process and just make it happen. So if anybody out there wants to try something or you're a little hung up on it or you're not sure or whatever the case is, you can do these little experiments. You can, you can make these little things, you know, happen, make them come to life, come into fruition, however you want to call it. And it's just, as long as you follow that basic structure, that path, you can make anything. And literally, I just proved that. A man with zero experience, not the most skills as far as machining is concerned or anything like that. I can program some basic stuff, but I'm no software engineer. I'm no master machinist, you know, I'm none of that stuff. I just, some basic, follow the path. There's the product. And now it opens up a world of other areas that I can get into. I can spend some more time programming it now. I can do more with it. And anybody else can do the exact same thing. Just like that. Just keep it simple.